Hey everybody, welcome back to the Midnight Paint and Body channel. Today we are going to revisit my most controversial YouTube video. That's right, I'm bringing back the 128i that I painted the trim black on. I didn't know when I made that video that so many full-on absolute trim painting experts would watch a video titled How to Paint Trim. Imagine that. So, bringing the car back for you guys to look at. Now, I know you BMW guys, you're all pretty fussy about who works on your cars. You know, they should be worked on, you know, in a shop with a polished floor and shiny lifts. So, to make you feel better, I've got my BMW mechanic certification. So there you go. So the backstory on this car, did a video eight, nine months ago where I painted the trim black on it. And I just thought, well, I'm doing it. I'll just make a video, it's just something to do. So this is my daughter's car. I don't typically work on stuff like this. So she's home from university for a break. I just got it in the shop doing an oil change and I thought, hey, we should have another look at this. So before we go in for a closer look at the trim that all the experts said was going to fail, let's go over to the paint bench and kind of look at some products. And now just for reference, this is typically, if you, if you happen to watch my other videos, you know, this is typically what I work on. Classic cars, rust repair, a little bit of anything body work. So let's go over here. Well, if you've been following the uh, Chevy 2 video, there's the narrowed 9-inch and 4-link setup for it, so that's kind of cool. So, the paint we used on it was the, the Sem Trim Black. Now, this is a formulated trim paint. This, that's what this paint is for. Now, so the first thing lots of guys kept saying is, You didn't put any primer on it! LOL! Everyone says LOL behind their stupid comments. So, now say you are painting, say these four link bars. These are raw steel. These definitely need to be primed before you paint them. You can't just paint over raw steel. It's not gonna last, they're gonna rust because this metal rusts. Now let's say, what do we have that's chrome? What do we have this chrome? Say we're painting chrome. Now if you're painting chrome, chrome doesn't rust. So, you don't, if you're using the correct paint, you don't need to prime that. What you need with this is mechanical adhesion. So the surface needs to be sanded, it needs to be roughed up so that paint has a tooth to bite into to stay on. I mean the same with the metal, you need to, you need to sand it for the primer to stick to and then you know, your primer is going to protect the metal, and then your paint is just your coating, your color. So, this paint, now, says right on it. This is an acrylic coating formulated to match the OEM finish on automo automotive trim components for use on plastic, steel, aluminum, stainless, and more. And then, uh, now where is it? So, any paint product, by law, has to give you the MSDS, or the Material Data Safety Sheets, uh, or the Technical Data Sheet at salmonproducts.com. So you can go on there and you can get all of the really important information, and that's where they'll tell you that this, you know, this paint is formulated to paint over chrome, stainless, whatever, as long as it's prepped properly, it has to be sanded. If you're painted over smooth chrome, it's gonna fall off. Now the next thing all the experts kept telling me was, you didn't put clear coat on it, LOL. You don't need to put clear coat on it. When you've got a paint formulated to be the trim color. Now if I was using regular base coat, 
I would need to put clear on it because that is just the base. That doesn't have the protective layer. So say I was using regular base coat, in that case, I would have primed the chrome because this is not formulated to go right over steel. If I was wanting to do that trim finish with regular base coat, I'd use something like this. In this case, that's another SEM product. This is a hot rod clear. This is a flat clear. So this stuff you spray it out of the can is really, really flat. I typically mix it a little bit with some regular clear until I get the, the sheen that I want, whether you're going for like a satin or a, kind of an eggshell finish. And then, of course, if you're painting it like a regular paint job, you want it to be shiny, then, yeah, I mean, you're going to clear coat it. So this is the clear I use. This is the Shopline European clear coat. So there is that. So that makes sense. You don't have to clear it. I mean, you can. It's not going to hurt it. So let's go back to the car. I had someone else say, oh, I'd sure like to talk to that customer now and see what a mess it is. So that car, I mean, it's not a, it's not a summer toy. This is where we live. <laughs> it's, uh, it's still very much winter. Oh, and here comes the shop lion. So let's go look at the car and see how it stood up. So this was, I think it was nine months ago I did this. No, my daughter wanted the trim painted black. She bought some fancy black wheels for her car and put some other little black doodads on it. So whatever, that's cool. So now here's the trim that everyone said was not going to last. I shouldn't say everyone. I got a lot of good comments on the video, but I just thought I would clarify a few things for everyone that said I did it wrong. So as you can see, I mean, even these leading edges where you'd think it might catch a few rocks, there's not a single mark in it. I'm not saying it won't chip. Rocks are always tougher than paint, no matter what you do. But, you know, you look at those leading edges on the trim, you know, the windshield's got a few rocks, but there's no issues yet. So, yeah, it still looks good. And of course, there's people said I should have taken the trim off. No. I hear you on that one. You can definitely do a better job. You take it all off. Problem is with stuff like this, you run a really high risk kinking this kind of trim, taking it off, in my experience. So I prefer just to mask it, do it on the car. And there's also, you know, 93 million plastic clips of which you're going to break a couple dozen of them for sure. And that turns into a pain in the ass, getting the correct clips to put stuff to back together. Especially when you live in a small town here like we do. I mean, we don't exactly have a BMW dealer. And aftermarket stuff is, uh, you know, it's not always on hand. I keep a lot of clips in my shop here, but probably nothing that would work on that car, to be honest. So anyway, guys, just a little clarification on that job. I had the car in here. I thought, oh, what the heck, I'll make a little video. Thought if you guys might get a kick out of it, it might bring the, the trolls back out. That's fine too, whatever. Let me know what you guys think. So, at the end of the day, what I did on it worked fine. Um, again, this was not like a paying customer job is my daughter's car. But I still got a warranty it. Paint falls off, I gotta fix it for her. Oh, look at that. We just added a couple of horsepower to this thing. So, as always, thanks for watching. If you're interested in any of this other kind of stuff, um, I've been doing a series of videos on this Chevy too. We're putting quarter panels and trunk floors and all kinds of new sheet metal in it, mini tubs. There's a whole series on this charger over the last year or so, which it's just taken a break for a while. 
And then I'm always doing other videos on rust repair and all kinds of auto body stuff. So, as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.